Joining me today is Jim Kozak, the owner of Cycle Metrics here in North Idaho, just north of Coeur d'Alene. He is the only authorized retool bike fitter in North Idaho and all of Eastern Washington. And today we're going to check me out on my new QR. So first of all, Jim, what's the difference between a retool bike fit and a traditional standard bike fit? Uh, the retool bike fit is essentially a sharper scalpel for the for the bike fitter. It provides a lot of uh, detailed measurements that you really can't measure with a goniometer and uh, uh, it also allows you to get a bike fit under actual power as opposed to a static bike fit where the measurements are taking while you're not in motion. So the equipment uh, monitors your position on the bicycle over a specified period of time, usually 15 to 20 second intervals, during which you ride at effort, and then uh, it spits out the numbers, giving me the average of those different angles, and allows me to make adjustments to the bike to bring those angles into the correct uh, realm of where they're uh, recognized to be beneficial to the rider. And it seems like an obvious question, but why should someone get a bike fit in the first place? Uh, the bike fit's the most important accessory you can get for your bike, um, both in terms of aerodynamics because uh, you're 85% of the drag on, on that bicycle. So you can have the most aerodynamic bike in the world, and if you're not aero on your bike, it's it, you're losing s something and and this is all about getting free speed you know stuff that that makes you go faster without putting more effort into it and it also allows you to uh, um, optimize Two. your power output on the bicycle allows you to be comfortable uh, or as comfortable as you can be they, they can only be so comfortable but uh, um, it gives you it, it tries to optimize all of those things and the important thing is that, that when you get fit for a bike that uh, the fitter knows what kind of distances you're going to be racing because what a, a fit for an Olympic distance or a sprint distance, if that's all you're doing, is probably going to be a more aggressive fit than one for an Ironman where you're on the bike for you know several hours. So um, it, it needs to be a sustainable position. If you can't sustain the position on your bike and you're constantly coming up out of the aero bars uh, you're losing a lot of, ben of the benefit of your fit and you might be better off to, to come up into a higher higher or more relaxed position so you can stay there and sustain that position. And working with someone who knows what they're doing who has been trained can make all the difference in terms of injury prevention too right? Correct yeah. Alright well let's take a look and uh, get me fit. Okay sounds good. On the printout, it'll show you a, just a, an image of the frame or just a line that represents the frame, and then you'll see, you know, if your knee's tracking like this, or if it's tracking straight up and down, or if it's making a loop, or, or you know, if there's any kind of stuff going on with that. So I'm guessing that when we get done, or when this we spit out these initial numbers, it's going to say, it's going to tell us that you know, your elbows need to be more directly underneath you there. This angle needs to be closed down and, and uh, we'll see how the back knee angles look and stuff like that. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to kind of have you start building up to speed there and I'm going to give you like a quick countdown, three, two, one, then I want you to ride it, you know, like like you're doing an Olympic distance on the flat. So pretty good power output, you know, I don't know, 80, 85%. You don't have to redline, but uh, you know, just get her up there and, and uh, we'll run about 18 seconds on a, on a trial. And when I'm, when I'm done, I'll just say, okay. And then it'll spit out the numbers and then I'll, you know, then I gotta sit here and kind of diagnose what's going on with these numbers and I'll print out the initial test form so we got a baseline and then we'll start making some changes and and then rerun 
testing you know till we till we get things where we think they need to be so okay so go ahead and start pedaling Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, Jim, that process took about an hour long. What did we learn today about my previous position and my new position? Well, we learned that that you were close ear earlier, but uh, your seat tube angle was a little bit slack. Uh, the seat was, was elevated a little bit more in the front, and it was behind the cranks at a little bit, bit more. Initial uh, seat tube angle was at about around 76 degrees, and we ended up we're probably in about the 79 degree range. So we've moved the saddle forward at least two centimeters there. We've also raised the saddle um, probably about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half of, of saddle height increase going on there. Are these pretty drastic measurements? They, it looks like it in, re, in relation to where it was before. Right. They're, I'd say they're moderate adjustments. I mean, I've made a lot bigger adjustments for people, but uh, your numbers were off a little bit in certain certain areas, and so we made these adjust adjustments, and the numbers have reflected those adjustments, and now they're within the recommended range that Retool provides for me. Um, so. We uh, essentially what we've done is we've moved Dave farther forward on the bike and increased his saddle height a little bit. So he's more forward of the crank set. That opens up the angle between the torso and the top of the thigh at the, at the top of the pedal stroke. So, um, so now we're going to let Dave do a little bit of riding and see um, see how he feels. We also did some things with his cleats. We wedged his cleats a little bit so that they make a, a more direct uh, interface with the pedal platform. And um, so now it's now it's up to Dave to, to report back to me and see how those things feel. And uh, um, you know we we may still have to tweak things just a little bit um, because rider comfort is is priority here but uh, but but anytime you do make a change in position you need to give it a little bit of time you can't judge it right off the bat because because uh, you've got some muscle memory going on there that we need to to try to work through and stuff and and get you uh, indoctrined into this position now and stuff and uh, most of the time it works sometimes the body goes no nope, not gonna go there and then we got to maybe back things off a little bit. So I imagine by bringing me forward and more on top of the pedals, I should be able to produce more power as a result? Uh, for most people, that's what it transfers to. and also gives them uh, the ability to, to run a little better coming, coming off of the bike. Um, it's it's uh, tri bikes are generally steeper than a, than a road bike. So some individuals go, well, I can't, I can't climb as efficiently with the steeper seat tube angle, but 
nine times out of ten I don't have any problem with my clients and their climbing abilities once they've been moved forward on the bike so um, you know everybody's an individual so I can't um, you can't put everybody in the same in the same box you know but uh, um, but we'll uh, look forward to seeing how you how you do with this and uh, how it translates to your you know your power output because you, you've got a power meter so we can see what's going on with that now so all right well Jim thanks very much if you're ever here in the Coeur d'Alene area North Idaho inland Northwest you're here for Ironman Coeur d'Alene or one of our Olympic distance triathlons check out Cyclemetrics, cyclemetrics.com and give Jim a call thanks a lot Jim thank you Dave appreciate it all right